It's hard to tell that you got even took one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right. Hey, Blasphemers, hang tight. Jeff Stewart is in studio, and he is our guest, and we're about to start the show right now. In hey, Blasphemers, welcome to Simple Blasphemy, where we have the best times with the worst topics. We're three friends that discuss everything and nothing, from wacky headlines to games and trivia. All subjects bizarre and risque are on the table. Our weekly guests range from friends, musicians, and artists to professionals in a variety of industries. Mm -hmm. We go live on Facebook and YouTube every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Want to support the show? Join our Patreon. You can find it and more at www.simpleblasphemy.com. So grab a drink and join it! It's too late now. This is Simple Blasphemy. All right, welcome to the oh, Simple Blast Me podcast. Love your hair, All man. You wow. That is wicked. <laughs> wow. That's nice, Andy. Jeez, we're Scooby. <laughs> um, you don't hurt Scooby. That's fine. <laughs> like <I> Brandy. Did. <laughs> Brandy, we're Scooby. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, just what? fuck this intro and look at Andy's hair. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, it's I'm his I, hair. I'm going to get you working over here like as my assistant mad scientist. Oh, I, I'm down. Are you kidding me? Can I have like <laughs> hair like this all the time? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I'm ready. What a mom. Okay. He's um, going with it. He's going for it. Hey, fuckers. Nice to see you. Um, like, share, subscribe. And this month you get what, Andy, if you do so? What did we decide on? Um, you know what? I was thinking that that power strip that you've been trying to get to work out in your garage for a long time that you've held on to for like five years, all of a sudden you plug that shit in and it works again. Okay. So that's for our hoarder folks. Yep. It doesn't uh, work that way. Yep. It doesn't okay. work that way. You're right, Zach. It doesn't work the way. But every once in a while, if you hit something just right, or if you leave it stored long Look enough, eventually it works again. This isn't any better. Okay. Like the Rhodes piano I just worked on. Yes. Like a vasectomy. Exactly. Okay. Same thing. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wow. All of that. Um, as mentioned, this week's guest is none other than Jeff Stewart. Hey, Jeff. We are going to returning guest. Thanks for um, coming out. We are going to dive into I, tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about the music business, like the, this side of the music business. All of us play music. Now I'm going to check um, out right now. Zach please. Green isn't in a band per se. <clears throat> One man. Band. I retired years ago. He's fire this retarded. Calls it to his wife is the one man band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This uh, this section brought to you by Boatswain yeah. Double IPA. Oh, nice. Uh, we are drinking uh, four roses, the small batch today. So I've had a single that. rose, but that was after oh, a bad I experience. Put my on. Um, what? What at the distillery uh, with the rose? Yeah. Bag? Oh man, remember him? I do. Um. So we're going to talk a little bit about the music industry, and we are going to dive into some um, stupid people stuff, of course, and then um, right up our alley. A whole what bunch of fun stuff, a lot of stuff of planned. Stuff. We've got a music. Uh, I don't. I don't want to say video, but it, I guess it kind of is a video. We have one of Jeff's songs to go over, which is one of my favorites. It's and like the uh, mid nineteen nineties, we have multimedia all over this. this I'm thing. trying. I am trying you're my doing, hardest. You're doing a fantastic job. And the more you pledge, the better it gets. Listen, for just pennies a day, mere <laughs> pennies a day, you can you could, support you can shampoo. Zach. You can no, support you can shampoo two Zacks hair. out of three. <laughs> what are they doing with me? They're pledging their support. Uh, oh. Athletic support. Oh, they're shampooing something. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> That's the that, package. Let's dive into our um shout outs quickly, since you know why why the heck not? Now for all of those oh. who have watched this show for so long, Jeff is right here. He is going to be able to tell you who the number one country in our audio only right here. Whoa. 
Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. I can't pronounce it, but I can see it. That's who has the best, the biggest what? Downloads. Of our show. Wow. Okay. Well, that's uh, India. Fucking amazing, it's right? Fucking India, right? It's always India. It's all right Where there. Isn't it <clears throat> India? India. That's by quite a. I mean, that's by like probably eighty percent. Eighty-seven point nineteen to be exact, Jeff. Oh, Jeez. as soon as this COVID shit clears up, we're fucking touring, baby. Bangladesh, <laughs> baby. Uh, Runner-up, United States. Thanks. Oh, runner-up this time. Good job, number two. Actually, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you, sometimes the states mm -hmm. doesn't make it a number two. And with that, we have our shout out from none other than Tanner Wirtz. Oh boy. Hey guys, Tanner here. I want to give a big shout out to the city of Toledo because apparently there's about to be a Toledo dating show happening this summer. It'll be really interesting to watch because everybody in the city has already fucked each other. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that's poignant. Whoa! Yowza. You'll do better in Toledo. You <laughs> you'll do yeah, you'll do something. If if this is at now now provided um Tanner did give me the article for it. I forgot to queue it up, but I'm, I'm going to do that really quickly. Um, can you imagine, like, we see, you know, being musicians and out at bars, we see a lot of people, you know what I mean? And a lot of repeats. These, these are, well, you know, just, what are you trying, what are you getting at? Yeah, thank you. You guys have shared partners. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the point is, it, it would be <laughs> interesting. Stop to, laughing really quick. <laughs> to see, I'm just saying to see on TV, like, people you actually recognize would be your what so what is the odd part about it so <clears throat> here we go based out of toledo on like t because tv is happening in toledo and people that you know there's a tv show who would we know anyway the generations that's like two generations away that whole yeah early. most of these people have like five kids now and they don't they don't have they, they're actually uh they don't have intercourse anymore what is what are oh. they doing what are they doing now uh, I don't know. Paying taxes. I thought it was get in and get out now. No commitments. That they say exclusive if you got a boyfriend now. That's or a oh, girlfriend. But now. we're like talking about the generations that are that are like way younger than all of us. Like we're doing other things. People have kids and shit like that, or people are married and shit. Well, like that. I'm glad you said that, Andy, because the website is called Match Make Mega Matchmaker. This is a contest of all single men and women, 21 years of age or older. Are welcome to apply and this is to be cast on mega matchmaker toledo premiere reality tv dating show it's right there i'm excited holy I'm crap in. it's it's you meta know, we I'd might like have to change see, format i'd like to see tanner like host it or something like that he'd be I, perfect I, for fuck it. yeah asked him perfect he's got a personality round. everything people lose a lot of folks thank what you he said yeah there. yeah could you imagine if you like perhaps are matched up with someone you already swiped left on or whatever you know in that. well matched up in other words mm -hmm. but wouldn't you see them and know that's them first yeah and, like go back for repeat performance uh, yeah depends Eek. on the lighting yeah did you put your contacts in that day it was Is nice. it an old prescription <laughs> well man what a different world from when i was dating man i mean i i think <laughs> Last time when I was dating, it was like you answered something in the back of the Metro Times or something like that. You know, there, it wasn't really on the computer. And, you know, I mean, you could go to a, sp a specific a specific um, website and I forgot what they were called, like eHarmony or something. It might have even have been before eHarmony. Yeah. But I mean, you'd have to go to this office and make a video and spend a shitload of money. But now it's just what like, are you talking about? App. No, I was talking about like dating services where they send you services. videotapes. Yeah, they oh, my God. Green, now going back to when you first started dating, what was it like? You know, because there wasn't that many services at all. I mean, did you? There like, wasn't. There was a couple was of like big get, ones. I'm just saying, what was it like for the first time you got that Morris code back that said, I'm interested? I, I never <laughs> I never went to one of those big uh, hubs like eHarmony.com or something like that. I did answer a couple ads out of the, the Metro Times. Okay. Just because they were really cool fucking like messages or something like that. And I just I just wanted to write back to the person and um I I dated uh, two girls and it was nothing that was uh like super long term, but uh we're friends till this day. I don't know, dude. It sounds loose, very yeah. loose story. Yeah, I'm, I'm not oh, joking. What? The story there, I'm telling? There's a picture of eight I don't hit 
by the way. Two girls from like Canada. It's like the weird science. You wouldn't know her. She's from Canada kind of thing. No. Now, mm -mm. I don't believe that you went through all that stuff just to talk to a person. You went through all this stuff, made videos and stuff back when you were. No, no, I didn't. I didn't make videos. I, I, it was, it was a Metro Times. It was a cheap little fucking uh, newspaper that came out like by the city, and on the back page or the the page before the back page or whatever, they'd just have you know people that would write seeking other people, and there was a couple messages that just fucking. I'm like, oh, that's fucking cool. I got to write back to that person, and and fucking cool people i wasn't long-term dating but uh we're friends to this day but no i never did the fucking big time go to this fucking office make a video yeah. fucking take out your checkbook and empty the bank account i never did that no no you gotta do you gotta write the check at the right time that you knew that it would clear god every time i Remember fucking talk days? it just gets construed to this all of this other fucking bullshit that i'm not even <laughs> alluding to I'm welcome done. to the simple blast i know podcast. i'm just gonna fuck hey so hey, I'm, really, I, I'm more I'm more concerned on what uh, Jeff has to say about this man. Let's I'm, yeah, <laughs> give it. I'm fascinated <laughs> by the fact that people did that stuff today. I mean, I it's you're not too much younger than all of us, are you? No, no, no. I'm probably older than all you guys. I probably then what the hell with the VHS no. and the. Hey, no hey, we just went out and you talked to people, or you just you know you were oh. social. Maybe I'm not sure. You know, mm -hmm. Even if you, you were you hooked up you in know. Frankie's basement. I mean, don't get yeah. me wrong. I did. I did that. Yes. Too. I, you know, I mean, that's you the, did it the in way the cold I chamber, met. like every normal yeah, I mean, person. There was interesting right. times in the basement for sure down there. Maybe you know Buffalo Bill had it right. Mm -hmm. um, let's let's pretend. I like making love in the dunes of a cave. Yes, <laughs> that's nice. That's very nice. <laughs> let's switch gears, and we and since especially since Peapod's in the chat, we're going to pretend we're on the radar podcast, folks. Which we interview people coming in and out of the Toledo and Midwest area and about music. So would you mind if we go down the music route for just a little no, bit? Sure, let's do it. Okay. I'm going to say hi to Alan and Terry and, and Peapod and we'll Julio. Um, so what I would wanted to discuss today was um, just the environment for the way music is. For up until COVID, it seemed like... Um, it went this weird pop, like this weird, like pop only thing. And now we've experienced, at least from us on the guitar side of the business, are experiencing empty shelves. And there's like this monster resurgence, especially from women. I mean, we have more women artists um, through our work than ever before. And uh, you get a big one of these. Yeah. That's and the, the women. Awesome. Do. The women don't even want to be categorized as women. They are guitar players, they're songwriters, they're musicians, and they, they deserve that respect. Yes. Um, but it seems like that COVID has locked everybody and most people into a very, I'm getting creative. I finally have time to, <laughs> to do some me time rather than always being out and, you know, on the stage. What's your take? You didn't on have a, drive, a gig to drive to. You know? Yeah. Uh, What's your take on that? What was your well, experience? I mean, you're, it's true. Everybody's sort of getting down, playing, discovering um, that they have time again. So let's get the guitars out and let's make music and stay busy, stay happy, get your mind going, keep your mind healthy. And you know, there was a couple of weeks, the first couple of weeks of the COVID thing, where you you know you're you're not the shutdown. You didn't know what to do. Nobody ever was yeah. in the same boat. So okay, well, all these gigs that I had planned out very meticulously and then you can't quantify the hours that you lost doing mm -hmm. that stuff. It's gone. So, okay. Cry about it for a second, but what's the next plan? We help. It's like the survival of the adaptable, you know, we just have to figure shit out. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, our job too, in some way, some small way, it's our job to, you know, take um, horrible situations and make people forget about it for a little while. Um, I think we're geared th towards that anyway. Aren't we yeah. kind of um, distraction? Yeah, yeah, distraction and um, and then for what you were just saying about it's our job almost, you know, as writers, or we 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 have to be key, keyed into these things and try to compartmentalize it into something, you know. Maybe you're walking, talking it. diversions. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So why don't we um, all? We'll we'll start with put Jeff on the spot because he's here. But what's one of your the one of your first or fondest memories where um, you were somehow got a feeling that your music is was doing more of an impact to a person or a group of people 
than you've ever experienced before? Uh, I don't know if that you start understanding that stuff. You get maybe a little older, you appreciate things more. And I, I think mm -hmm. this, the quarantine stuff has especially made me more aware of not to get nostalgic, but it's made me, okay, maybe I, you can see the work that you put in. You mm -hmm. can, and, uh, I think people that stick with you a little bit and are still watching out for what you're going to come up with and create. I think that's a cool thing. I think this, um, I was really struck and humbled by all the, the kindness that I received after I got done. I would play some live shows, live streaming things and people responded to it in a, just a, it was really warm and humbling and people were very generous with tips and, and, and stuff like that. So that blew me away and people were kind. Just, it was nice to connect with people and, and sharing about, you know, how you might have been important to them over the years and stuff. So, yeah. um, you know, I've had cool shows and all kinds of cool stuff like that where, oh, you know, who I, you've heard my song before or whatever. It always blows you away. But the, the biggest thing is just the people that are still into it, you know, because I think you know it now. You were saying the guitar is gone and it's like, man, I just want to play my electric guitar. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like a kid again. I, I bet I've got all these recording projects going on and I feel like a kid with my guitar. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I always feel like a kid with my guitar, but I'm really just excited about the possibilities for what's the next song we're going to record and what you know and it's going on all the time within You're my world stuck in your world now i am it's like being young and being stuck in your room when you were younger with your guitar That's and you dude isn't it perfect it really is yeah, isn't it Nick? and and now if you look over in that corner over there which is beyond the joe versus the volcano background i've got is i've got a keyboard that i bought and I'm doing like MIDI production and I've got nice studio monitors and I'm doing stuff for me. I don't yeah, care man. if anybody ever hears it, but the shit's always on over there. So when I go to leave the room, I'm messing around for a second. I haven't felt that way in 20 years. And you're getting it out of your system. That stuff it that is. you probably always wanted to do, you're getting it down and getting it it's done. And Musical masturbation is the best way to put it. It feels good, doesn't it? It really does. It's it amazing. Took a, it took a pandemic for you guys to realize that. You yeah. musically yeah. masturbate yeah. all the no, time. I've, Don't I've, talk I've to me talking, about this no, crap. No. We're exhibiting our shit. No, that's. But no, I've been doing that since We're the beginning up. of time. You know, like I, I gave up playing out and doing big projects years ago. But like, just being in my own room um, amongst my own fucking masturbating fucking bullshit. It's your masturbatorium. Yeah, that's the shit that just keeps me fucking going. You know, I don't care if anybody ever fucking hears it. It's just a religious so, experience to me. Green, green. Whacking green. off and playing some fucking guitar licks and building some shit and fixing some shit. I'm good. Green. America. Qu a question to you, too. Was there a time that you can remember where you first felt like you playing music or even maybe even fixing someone's shit, I guess, that that you got that first kind of like adrenaline rush feeling that, man, this is like... This is what I want to do. Mm. Is that the question? Yeah, I mean, um, what's the first time you wanted to really touch yourself, like really I sound? Don't, I know those are all different. Usually, right when questions. I wake up today. I don't. <laughs> I don't Andy, do you? Um, do I you... have no. I I have no idea. I'm still searching no? for that word. All right. Well, that's good too. As long as you're searching. Uh, okay. Andy so Pepe so. Lapu, what do you think? Sacre bleu, motherfucker. You're going to have to repeat the question for me. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, do you remember the first time that you really felt like some kind of vibe off other people while while you were playing music? You yeah. I mean? Uh, I mean, like, to remember fluently, no. But I, I know that there was a time that I got done playing down in Bowling Green, and I was on my way back north with the dudes in my car, and we had our uh, the trailer towing behind us, and the car could barely hold the trailer, so it was all it was grunting and groaning the whole time. But this song came on the radio. I can't remember what it, who it was by, but we had played in front of an entire Howard's Club H packed room, and I remember thinking to myself, "This is the this is the fucking best. If this is the top, I'm totally fine with it," because I'd never experienced something that felt that good before. Yeah, I, I agree. Um... My first memory of something was <clears throat> I was playing at this place called Carol's Time and Place, mm -hmm. um, pretty close to here. And um, it was a haven for a lot of high school bands. You know, and my, my, I was in high school at the time. Airport Highway, right? Yeah. Anna's and his mom, uh, Slap. And his mom yeah. was my brother, Dan. Yeah. Oh, I know. We used to play, actually. Did you know? I did, yeah, I did I talk to Dan a long time. Thank, and it's his birthday in a couple of days, and mine too. So thanks for reminding me of calling my welcome. brother. Thank You're you. Very welcome. 
<laughs> hey Siri, remind me to call my brother. The Secret Stones, but, one of my favorite all time. Hard, core, very good. Hard one of the moment that I nice dude. Yeah, but where is your brother? I don't know. Dan, if you're there, uh, we need a, stu we we need a stew pot. Let's we do need the, the stew pot. Where Britney Spears thing Wait. with Dan. Like, let's free Dan Stewart. Ward, you have a brother? Technically, yeah. Oh. Very technically. Okay. Anyway, we're off track. Um, okay. This lady, we got done playing, and it's a little bit of a rough area. Not, not too bad, but a little rough. And this lady came over to me, and here I am, long-haired, you know, 16 year old kid and she says hey i just want to thank you for your music you made me forget about that i just got divorced today mm. and then just kind of walked away well, she didn't shove her hand like, down your well, i'm like i'm in oh no and i thought well this is probably gonna happen every time right which you know <laughs> but i just remember <laughs> <it's actually laughs> in one way or another and well, you know what guys that was the last time that shit ever happened to anybody yeah. in a local band ever was <laughs> zach was the very tail end of it it was like oh i'm gonna totally yeah I, oh, peaked. No, I guess i'm not i, mm. I peaked at six no no you were at the end <clears throat> um so anyway going back to well the only album <laughs> i have you know i'd listen to it digitally just exclusively or this is a, this is you yes it is Look at that, folks. There we go. We're probably covering it up. The cold and the beautiful. See? I like that. The, the photography's good. Now, the layout's good. My fiance took the picture in the Smoky Mountains. You actually this, put the little the, the schwa fiance. or whatever it on, on the fiance. Sheen? Little Sheen? That smells word. like. Little smells Charlie like Sheen or a little Martin Sheen? Um, What inspired you to put these group of songs together? <clears throat> And, and you know what I mean? You, do you always have like different groups of projects mm -hmm. kind of a thing? Uh, this was the, to the last kind of my philosophy about recording. I put, put out a record, put work on a record, put out a record, work on a record, and they get depressed, figure out what the hell I needed to do, put it, work on another record, put another record out. Did that for a lot of times. And I decided after this one, I wasn't going to ever do that again, just to redo singles and stuff. And, um, now I've got literally six different studios that I'm working with, with different projects. I've got about a half albums. If you go by 10 mm -hmm. and each, so there's a lot of wrangling going on. This was the last one where everything's being done song by song right now. So I'm focusing like living in the moment with your guitars and stuff, the masturbatory moments and having those every day with different friends in the studios, but getting this, these brand new songs out and done and off my ass and on to the next one, like very, picking the colors and living with mm. it and maybe doing tweaks with the mixes and adding things here and there, but that's how I'm doing it now. And right. it seems to be setting me free in terms of having to have a whole album concept to work on. This was a part of my part point of my life where I was, um, I had asked my friend Greg Leonard to come in and, and, and produce it for us. We had a team of guys. We did it very quickly with, uh, live or with drums and, and, and bass together. Uh, it was done more as a band effort and it done in like we did it in about three months in that in terms of tracking everything and so that had to be wrangled in in its own way and this was about at the same time i was going through this am i going to make it with my woman or am i not going to make it am i going to lose her am i not going to make it so this song cycle had a lot to do with that situation in my life my personal life and it was recorded with the emotion of having you know, uh, whiskey voiced, uh, no sleep recorded it between grunts. I've been eating better now and I have, I found my voice again. And I like the recording between <clears throat> grunts. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're recording, you know, whenever you could get the words out, you know, and that's so every that high binder album is recording between grunts. Good, good, good. <laughs> Black and hot. Um, <clears throat> so it was very specific time. That was a snapshot of something, this particular album. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you. It's almost like, this journal, I consider album journal entries for me. It's fair. Um, and it's where you are you trying, if I'm hearing you correctly, I'm trying to reword it. Tell me if I got this wrong or not. But these group of songs, you needed to kind of get out. It needed to kind of come out a little bit earlier than other things. Is that kind of accurate? Earlier I mean, than other things. Well, what I mean by that is like if you're, your love life is exciting and but yet doesn't have the greatest direction that you're, if you're kind of like, where is this going? Where my love is flowing? Well, love life meeting, um, it was just in a 
we were having a fucking tough time you know, at the yeah. time, you know, and I was thinking I was going to lose her. Cause I wasn't, I've been in marriage long-term things before. And, and then I was free of all that for a mm-hmm. long time. I didn't want to be committed anymore. I just was very happy with myself. And then I meet her. I don't commit to her for a long time. And then when you have a threat of possibly losing mm-hmm. her, then you can perhaps get fucking insane or out of your head, you know, cause you're not going to lose that. I didn't want to lose anybody again. And I made it, we're on the other side of all this album right now, but this was stuff that came up. The emotions were hit hard in the, in the, it was all recorded during that time. And the songs were written during that time and all harvested during that time. And, and some other things, other interests that I had also going on. So there's, it's dark and light mixed with all of it. And my, you know, a lot of desperation and a lot of yeah. lack of sleep and, and possibilities and all that shit. Do you mind if we hear one? Is that all right? Yeah. Folks hang tight. Um, I'm looking forward to this. Here we go. Leave me to lie with a knife in my heart. In times have changed, and life is still strange. I think, do I know who I am? Bring me a sign, dear. Pour me some wine. It's good to be back with the tan. Oh, and tell me of the pain in your heart. Kiss me one more time for we part. I'll take me.
All right. Um, I'll look at Andy's hairs back. Whoever, awesome. was, <laughs> awesome, man. Whoever was playing the team. I like it. I, I have, do no, like it I, have, I have sincere things to say. If everybody wants to go first, I have really yeah, awesome, yeah. sincere things to say. Dude, that's fucking like ween. That's Diener shit right there. That's some really fucking good Thanks. Freeman. God damn. Mm-hmm. I had not seen that wean angle on. That was very cool. Oh my god, yeah, Andy! It's would you put that wig back on? <laughs> You're way more attractive, dude. No, it's, there's something about it tonight. There's really are something you gonna about are you gonna like? If the pants come down, then I want you to sing that song. Fine. What are you doing? I'm not wearing pants or underwear tonight. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I never heard that. Comp- uh, I never heard of that. Uh, I only the, had the a, wing thing. I only had a nickel for every time yeah, Zach yeah. Green said that. <laughs> So no, really, really quick. First of all, uh, cello. Yeah, is that a cello? Fucking, it's re- like yeah. Who, who did that? That's that was, did uh, you do that stuff. My or friend uh, and Zach's friend Greg Leonard did all the orchestration okay. on that That's in his studio. Mm. Dude, no, I mean it's just it's really it's complex. I I fucking love it. It's really Thanks. complex. It sounds awesome. And I I just have to ask you a question. You know, you being able to do that kind of stuff you know i'm the kind of guy i'm just a backyard mechanic and that can fix fucking shit you know maybe i can repair a guitar i don't know but like when it, when i come to mute when it comes to music for me i can just write grooves and riffs but how does like one get to like something that your level to where you can actually not only write a song but write lyrics just work at you know, it. Like what? How do you do that? That is, that is so foreign to me. And if every time I've tried, it's come out horrible. It's like, oh, just stick with your riff screen. That's all you're good at. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I think just. I mean, I guess I do know. You just have to work on it. And I'm fortunate being a songwriter, so I have to write songs. And uh, Green, getting... how do you do, how do you take all those electronics and fix video games? I, right. I I just I mean, I, yeah. I guess yeah. Good point. Spe- I, it's I, a I just I just thing, fucking man. do it. Man, I, I don't know. Life's a bunch of puzzles, right? And they're different puzzles, but, and there's some puzzles we like that's, better than others. Right. Jeff's got a really good, but he's I'm, got a good angle to be able to write something I'm real and write envious for something. on people that can like do a complete song. You know, like like all you guys can do that. You know, you can write a complete song with lyrics. You can sing it, and like I'm just the guy that's like, yeah, I fucking solo over it, or I can come up with a fucking riff. But that's about you know, it. Think- over over the top of some people that can't solo for shit. Andy, I mean, we should all tell Zach what he needs to hear. You can do it, Green. Yeah, dude, just do it. You need to oh, give it a shot. Shit. Jump in the jump in the deep end, man. I'm hugging you, man. I try. Yeah, try. I, will, I will. I'm end. gonna hug your your pelvis. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> nah, with this wig. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, as long as you have that wig on, I'm cool with it. Like like grinding or humping the pelvis. <laughs> like grinding or humping. Whatever it is, we talk about grinding and humping. You look like Andy Dick right Dude, now. It's, um, so, it's such a no, cop. Oh, no, no, no. All done. Hey, wait. Oh, yeah. I would rather oh, kill a it. thousand <laughs> Andy Dicks than, than risk one Phil Hartman. Hey, I just wanted to say that wig was so complex that it started messing with the green screen. It was so complex. Now wait a minute. You is the green having... screen? Is the green screen what I'm talking about back here? Is the green screen something that's going on up here? A little bit of both. Maybe. Mm. Is there the Zach green screen? <laughs> green. There's always that screen somewhere. Ooh. Yeah, there is some um, way. All right. Where's this boner coming from? <laughs> oh wait, it's got blonde hair in it. It's fine. Wow, it feels like elementary school again. It's coming from the penal <laughs> gland. <laughs> all right. So let's. <laughs> Is there anything okay? Uh, maybe is there anything could, serious we can talk about to distract? Well, us? There, there, there's a lot of unserious <laughs> stuff. To, <laughs> and, no, I'm sorry. I really started that out as something serious, and it morphed into it's okay. I started dog, it out as something serious. Water. Jeff's fucking that song. No, amazing. it was not. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, dude. It was awesome. All right. Fucking so on that note, big. no pun intended. Where can people find your music? Where's the easiest way? Uh, right now working on videos. So YouTube trying to get that presence going. Spotify has been important to me. Um, and then we're getting ready to do this, uh, distribution thing with this co- thing called distro kid. Okay. And it's oh, I love street- distro kid. Yeah. It's apparently it just kind of gets your stuff out in every platform and just Trouble Giant did that. That's, yeah. that's who did our, our cassettes. <clears throat> yeah. It was amazing. All right. Yeah. The people have been talking about that one. If you do search Jeff Stewart, the cold and the beautiful, you'll find you somewhere. Definitely. 
Yep, yep, yep. So, put it in. Put Jeff Stewart Toledo in or whatever, and this will pop right up. Cold um, and beautiful. And just for those looking, that's what it, the cover Cold, looks like. All capitals, A-N-D, beautiful if you're and, blue-green. And we are, just like Jeff, we are trying to get our YouTube thing going more so than anything else. Um, so if you find Jeff and YouTube, hit the subscribe button, please. Um, okay. Are we ready to? Oh, yeah. We're going to go. Can we go dumb again? Okay. I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is really dumb. I, I really appreciated you guys during the quarantine too. There was one time where um, I was pretty down and out my, for my own ways during the quarantine for different reasons. And this, you guys were a savior, a beacon in the night. And I was laughing like a little kid commenting. And I felt like, oh, yeah. I was just, it was able to be a goofball and appreciate you guys. That's yeah. all. God, thank you. Good. I mean, uh, that, right. that seriously, Shucks. that goes a really long way. No, it's, it does. It's fun to be just talk about, like you said, can we get dumb? I mean, seriously, it, it's pretty nice to just get dumb for a minute, man. There has to be a way to mm. even this shit out. Yes. There's so much sincerity and there's so much let's let's be careful with stuff. I think we straddle the line of being careful and being sincere. Pretty. And one of my favorite quotes of all time is you're never fully dressed without a smile. <laughs> what? Wow. Amen. That, 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 should, that should be that should be in the Bible. Andy, never, you never. Yeah. Not only that quote, but Andy's that. Andy's chest hair should it be mean, in the Bible. It means like you. Yeah. Oh, by uh, the way, yeah. I want to uh, say prayers for our our buddy Kane Loke. He yeah, was. What's happening with him? I don't know. He said he's got some heart issues. I'm. I just because he's a dude of ours, yeah. and we all love him. Where the fuck are your nipples at, dude? You posted a picture on Facebook earlier. You don't have nipples. Did you get there, those things removed? No, there's a story. We'll have him tell it next time. Um, He's got a nipple story. Yeah, he does. He okay. moved. He removed let's, his nipples. Let's just say at one point they were pierced. Man. Oh boy. I don't. I don't know if I want to hear it. To be honest with yeah. You. Just for like the pain reaction thing. The yeah. Pinch thing. Oh, that's just okay. Second most. Here we go, folks. Uh, we need in it, my body. We're gonna get. We need your reaction to the. You loke, daddy. Or Andy, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Jesus Christ. Why? There's, there's. You did it closer. It's the. Oh. There's no reason for that. There's no that reason for that bad. ever. God, ever. I'm into some fucking stuff, but that's. Oh. That's, that's some Jane's addiction, Dave Navarro oh. stuff right there, folks. Oh, that makes Jane. <laughs> that uh, lesbian porn for me, I guess. Jeez. Um, by the way, wow. that was a Russian mm. gentleman. <laughs> Which you might be able to notice. I got it. Did you knickers. say that was eruption? <laughs> that was a Russian. Was oh, a, I thought you a, said eruption because it was that oh, too. Oh, dude, don't bring. Oh, don't bring Van Hal Don't tie Van Halen into this. And speak, Greeny. Speaking of tying, can we bring up how he was hooked up? Yeah. Oh. He had clamp, clamp, carabiners, piercing, piercing on his ass cheeks. He yeah. had two <laughs> piercings on each of his ass cheeks. <laughs> With a big, probably a big gauge hook. Sure. Oh, yeah. If you're into the gauge things with your ears or your nipples or whatever you need to yep. do. But he had him on his ass. Mm -hmm. And then he was bungeed yeah. off of the bridge. Really looked like it looked like it could have been. It was not very um, professional, I would say. No. But the that was some, that was some ropes bought at Tractor Supply and a few carabiners. Oh, and man. a little bit of whiskey. And, it know. was definitely a DYI. And he was yelling. <laughs> He's the oh, whole time, oh. and and the echo what is what made it haunting. <laughs> That's it, Greeny. He was yelling. He know it. It was painful. Uh, anybody else in the chat? What do you think? Huh? Um, oh my God. All right. Uh, next up, I'm done. <laughs> God damn it! I quit. No more. I I quit. Quit. Oh no. Okay. Cooley brings up a good point. I don't know if you saw that or not. Where? Oh, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> Coolio brought up a nice point. A good talking? point. Andy reminds me of an East European prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> what is problem? You pay the rent, you get the fuck out, okay? No ways in the juice. No ways in the juice, you get the um, fuck out. Don't give shits. Goofballs.
All right, oh. next up, we're, we're you, you cruising bastards. through here. Grassy bastard. People are tweeting the dumbest things they believed about at, at the age of 18. In other words, things that they believed at the age of 18. So obviously you guys <laughs> think about that. Think about it from your own perspective so you can chime in. Here comes number one. Finally, I'm free and I can do what I want. Remember that 18 thing where maybe if you just got out of the house, you're saying, finally, I'm free. But you, you, you figured out pretty quickly that there's bills and mm -hmm. just ask that green. Green's oh. taxes because he has no kids. Mm -hmm. He might as well just give me the money since I have so many children. But, oh, and I do. And I do. Yeah. Well, thank I, you, I, I, well, I didn't get that thank, thank you card this year. Yep. I, I'll, it'll happen. Deuce. Okay. Um, it's a good idea to get a stomach tattoo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, what would it say? Well, I mean, let, let's just say this. Look, women. Um, women. This, this way this for was, a good this, time. Her name was Heather. Mm -hmm. So she had gotten a stomach tattoo. <clears throat> I'm, I'm assuming she um, perhaps had a child. And all of a sudden, that frog turned into a, you know. I didn't get anything from that reading that there. You didn't, you didn't. It's a good idea <laughs> to get a stomach tattoo. Yeah, but I'm, I glad thought, that, I'm glad that we have some churches. like oversight going on over at the, the host's offices. Well, I think what you were insinuating is perhaps she had the, the, maybe the pregnancy was hard on her and, and she yeah. had a tattoo to maybe scarring or something, perhaps. Yeah. The peace frog doesn't look the same. From 1996. But you were, but you were talking about being 18 and young. Yeah. So hopefully she'll rebound rebound back when if you're that young. I agree. What would you get as a young girl on your stomach? Like they have the back men or women. Perhaps a flower. Would there's like the tramp stamp they call it right yeah. in your back, men or women. An what, ass men? hat. A what? It's an ass hat. Well, maybe a four leaf yes. clover, or like around rose. your belly button kind yeah. of feel. Right, put an arrow pointing down that says "Lucky you." Maybe a cornucopia. Lucky me, lucky you. Like that's the entrance in the cornucopia. Like there are Thanksgiving. The biohazard symbol. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Five story fall. Um, bullseye. See, what else we got here? The bullseye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why don't parents just wipe their kids' nose? How hard can it be? Update. It's really hard. I to do. keep up with it? <laughs> you squeeze. You just grab them and go. And especially. Then when they start playing outside and all that that mucus attracts the dirt and dust and it gets crusty, and it, it like kind of reminds you of a like a like one of those mocha delights or something like that. Oh, like that, that. Snorting a sandbox. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So was there something green? Look at you. You remember so much. You remember coming out of the birth canal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You remember your first beer. You remember Passing your yeah. your first all erection right. back in all preschool. Right. Remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Jesus, what's <laughs> what's something that you believed to be true, <clears throat> but now you know it's just not the case? No, I, 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 you know, when you first mentioned that, I was trying to wreck my mind and think about that, <laughs> but I, you know what, I hate to say it, but I knew more when I was 18 than I do right now. Oh. I, I, I just realized, and this is probably, you know, a philosophy, but I, at 48 years old, I don't know anything. Yeah. And 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 when I was 18, I envy my 18-year-old self because at least I th thought I fucking knew things. I don't anymore. I don't know shit anymore. Okay. But I I I I can't zero in on what those little things were, this or that. You know, maybe there's an existence of a god, maybe there's not a god or maybe there's ghosts, maybe there's not ghosts. I don't know. It doesn't matter anymore because I don't know fucking shit at 48. Okay. Andy, is there something uh, more than green, maybe? No. I, can't I don't go, know anything. I can't, no, I can't really go any farther than him because he's got it. We really don't know shit. Um, it's like I realized all of a sudden that I am fucking but, dumber but, than a fucking... But you got all you have all of this, this mileage behind you. So, for example, I have a 20-year-old son. I love him to death he's a wonderful kid he's a wonderful human being would i go back and tell my 18 year old self that you should really pay attention to how women's cycles work oh okay probably not 
because I don't want to be without him. But for anybody that doesn't have a kid, I don't know. There, there's no way that it's it's useless information. It's completely useless because I would not I would never take it back. But man, if I was 18 and 18 in the moment, I'd be like, oh yeah, this would be something to know. Okay. Yeah, it. sure, dude. But you have to experience yourself almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you, Jeffrey. Uh, man, I really thought that there was going to be like some epiphany or like you got to a certain place and you were going to get like the secret to life. Yep. I always thought that you're, I was going to get be enlightened somehow. I didn't know when it was going to come, but I thought, I don't know if it was a dogma thing or if it was just something I thought, like I would get all the answers and learn what the secret to happiness and everything was. And you know, then you would read the homework books. You're like, oh, maybe this is not going to happen. Maybe this is what it is, you know, to live happy every day and get up and try to feel good every day. All the stuff, your friends, family, all the stuff that you know, you're supposed to be happy about, you know, and, and but it didn't tell you any. You, you never really it, life just went, oh, you're a grown up now. Here you go. Ploop into the world of best of luck, reality. Best of luck, son. <laughs> good luck to you. And then and you never, you know, get that advice, but you get that from learning from other people. That kind of blew my mind. Like Jesus, I'm gonna have to figure this shit out myself. Yeah, you yeah. have. That's called the folly. That's the folly of youth. Yeah, I've yeah. talked about that a whole bunch. Yeah, so, and 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 let me add on onto that. Like, like right now, like at 48, like I might say I don't know anything, but I do realize how hard it is to live a lifetime. And if there's anything I can take away from this, it is to actually interact with other people when they're going through some really fucking hard fucking yeah. shit man and that and and to actually comfort be and there for them that's the only fucking thing. thing i fucking learned and and i i have to say that's probably the most useful thing i was gonna say that's not the and only dude, thing that's a big thing yeah that's yeah, a man. big thing if, if there's anything to take away from life it's that and greeny like you were saying you said you don't know it you knew you don't know anything now but because we were 18 we thought we knew fucking everything like don't you can't tell me what to do i okay sure older man or older mentor person i hear what you're saying but i'm going to probably make this some dumb ass mistakes because i know everything but now you realize that you really just didn't know shit you're just how could you possibly yeah have known that all that yeah. stuff you're supposed to know the and how ultimate you know humiliation now? you were never prepared for yeah <laughs> um and and just the to, ultimate you know kind of expand on that just even a little bit farther is just you know, being open to like just human empathy and be empathetic and and, and uh, mm. sympathetic for, for those that we haven't been through. You know. Everybody's going through shit, man. Everybody's yeah. got their own things going on, their own darknesses, their own their own their own problems. Everybody's yeah. got family shit that's going on in their it's lives. A measure of universality, and mm -hmm. the idea of universality is what brings us together. Is that we have all gone through stuff that is completely unlike one another. And also exactly like one. Another. Very, yeah. We have, all, we have all had to wake up and pee four times in a night. <laughs> Better get That's that it, man. You're, you're either peeing in a golden yeah. toilet or you're peeing in a street. We've and, all done that. And we can. And are you getting out of bed during this? You're getting out of bed most to do of that? the time. Yeah. yeah right. Oh, yeah. Most of the time. And, and well, no, you could be. Cut a hole in the bed. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, I still have the idea that we have to have these side things for the bathrooms. Just put whatever. You know, and then we've also there you can see for that. Yeah. We've also had people that are very ill and sick, and then we've also had people that have died. Yeah, especially the, the COVID thing. I think people downplayed the serious I'm not saying everybody, folks. I can already hear emails coming in, like no, you but can't. just downplayed the you know, this it's, it's the seriousness. We we're we're talking about this at work that if if people truly just took those two months off and you know maybe stayed at home and and didn't mingle we could have nice things but that's a whole other conversation isn't it yeah it's too we usually don't it's that. more of a mingle or all mangle shoulda woulda coulda on some way shape or form but and then dinny 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 we have we had a lot of uh missing from we have we had a lot of different information from a lot of different things yeah. from everywhere and it was hard to decipher what any truth is, and, and it became politicized. It's a big and, yeah. puddle of fucking mud. And now we don't really get is. an old West End festival because of you assholes. Yeah, wait a second. This isn't even funny. Mm -mm. Or as they say, Andy, festival. Festivals. festivals. The old West Enders, they say festival. It's not the <laughs> festival or old West End festival. It's festival. Festival. Mm. 
All right. Well, I had a parking spot this year. That's the thing that okay. pisses me off. I had a parking spot and I had a mm. garage to play in. Ah. You're, ah. You're, you're never too old to have fun and flash your boobs. Marty. <laughs> That's great. good for her. No, yeah, good for her. As long as the bra stayed. <laughs> she knew what she was Free doing. the titties. It's it fine. That's what holds them up. Free them up. Oh. She, that was, that's all. That, did that lighten up the load a little bit? <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm practically desiccated. Oh. You know, and you, if you grew up. It's like an old ball sack. <laughs> if you were a dried out here, raisin. If you're an older seasoned um, individual, like even Julio could probably back me up in this well in the <laughs> chat because we're a little bit older. When you went to a concert, you women used to flash. You know what I mean? Or even at a lot of We've us, were, you know, in our just, age group that's happened quite a bit. Yeah. Do you guys realize the moment that that practically stopped? No. I don't, think it, I don't think it's oh, phones had cameras, oh. and there is no more flash in the band. Interesting. If and I'm not saying that for a fact, that's my guess, but it all seems a little too coincidental. Yes, good. Maybe we should guess. Yeah, maybe maybe again, if you look at the Faraday cage thing again, the what the, the Faraday cage, you drop your phone in this thing in this pack that you still have in an emergency so if you really need to take a picture of those boobs you can or call your mom because don't worry we'll get back there that gamma ray burst is heading this way please everybody's getting paid now to do like the flashy now because everybody's like the only fans and stuff so it's like oh yeah they're people making people, money off flashy. of it now. right right the flashy yeah. is to make it's oh yeah there, you know they're making yeah they're actually and able to turn i'll that show you money. i'll flash you for if you get my ten dollars per month or this twenty dollars. I made man. twenty bucks. Dude, in this I actually know a alone. couple of girls that actually do that for a fucking living. Bank, and they, and they make fucking like three or four times the amount I do. Yeah, Julio right. says, "Oh yes, I've seen more tits at ACDC shows than at strip clubs." <laughs> do you really want the ACDC guys looking at your boobs, though? Yeah. What? <laughs> well, what? In what context? Yeah, we don't. Hey, first that's all, classics. That's like saying, you know, like, hey, hey do you want like you? Albert you? Einstein or uh, or Pablo Picasso See, looking at your I, boobs? I don't know. We're getting into the old guy. <laughs> no, can't do it. It's all, no, it's all old guy fucking talk, man. Why is Angus looking at your boobs? Why, why is that? Why did that come up? How did right. that come up? Yeah, fair. Uh, 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 wearing a little schoolboy uniform on top of it at age sixty. Many Again, many we don't king shame here, so we can just knock that no. shit off right now. No, these are no, no. face rhetorical questions. Oh, right. No, we're we're king? praising it. We're king? actually we're we're trying to promote it, Ward. Okay, I, I reverse. Like bring it back, is that a greenie? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, we gotta bring that back. We gotta bring back that actually thinking. My kink. We gotta bring have, back that type of thinking. I'm starting to get a little bit of a teeth, like. <clears throat> I've noticed when I'm doing stuff, there's a wet mark underneath my <laughs> my bosom. I'm not joking, and it has a. Little... Why does it have to be teat? Why can't it just be like sweat? Well, I mean, no, below my, my teat. teat. You don't have a teat. I have a, I'm a teat. You have teat? to people to have like farm animals sucking on your nipples for milk. Oh, it's getting to that point, Jeff. It's getting close. Oh, I just thought you were referring to the fucking You're shaft. Not... You know the no. shaft of his nipple. The He's tip, not the tip of the, tip of the shaft. Mouth. I don't know. So you're having secretions out of your teats? How long does your thing need to be to be considered a shaft? Oh, I've got three shafts. Like stretch. Oh, just exercise, you shut your mouth. <laughs> and I think um, a shaft has to have a certain <laughs> diameter. There has to be a gauge to it to be a shaft. This is a pipe. I, I you're getting the shaft, buddy. I this am definitely. Shaft. It's got a fucking theme song right there. Yeah. And talk about shaft. Nipples mm -hmm. look like a fucking coffee can. Again, like, yeah, you don't you don't want the fucking uh, dinner saucers. Oh, the tea saucers. The what did I do? Dinner Flash saucer, surface. tea saucers, whatever. Yeah, they're so, they're, spread, names, they're, you know. they're spread so thin that it just mm. becomes like almost invisible, like Nutella on angels' wings. Transparency, <laughs> or, <laughs> opaque is the opposite. Uh, yeah, transparency. sometimes transparency oh, is good when it comes to guitar finishes to show the wood grain, but on tits. 
You don't want to show those veins, oh, baby. Oh, you, you don't want to no, put I, grapes with a flash. No, I, think I, I, <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm, like I'm sorry. I got a weird visual. This is a lot. There's this a lot to bad. take. That was a big this statement. Is that was, this that is was a lot, lot to take. Should we unpack it or no? Listen, no, I want. I want Jeff. Jeff you know Jeff what? I want Zach Zach to like unpack it. Statler and Waldorf. I'll unpack that one. I'll go with that one, Jeff. Well. He's getting specific. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. you, the question you said no, something I mean, about. Uh, no, unpack veins anything. Veins or something in You don't want to see the veins. I I think the, that are all beautiful. I think everything's beautiful yeah. about the frontage no, of, a, of a No, they are. So because, because no matter what exists, there's somebody that really fucking digs it. Yes. Yeah. There's a niche for everyone. People on yeah. the um there's just so many visuals out that you have that you talk about for reasonings and stuff. But yeah. um, I think that there's the motherly end of things with the big uh, Jesus greenie. This yeah. is where you've taken it to. And right now I've, I've talked to myself right into a big old veiny titty hole right now. Veiny titty. <laughs> titty hole. The dinner saucers or, or tea saucers. Mm -hmm. Extra yeah, they come in. Cheese. Now, here's a good question. I'm sorry. There's a lot of people that think that stuff. I, I, sh I we just... haven't talked about boobs in so long. It's this. It's about time. Are you guys <laughs> partial to El Natural or to the, you know, the implanted thing? No, I no. personally would all natural. Natural. Baby. All I'm, I'm not oh, I, I felt those fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Those I don't get the plants. Yeah, especially oh, yeah. on the on the stripper side of things. I think that the point felt like a nerf that... ball. You know what a nerf ball feels like. Yeah. The, well, the, I mean, this is visuals. going back in a day, so this is probably there's better technology out there today. Better nerf. <laughs> a better nerf. This is a nice Spalding. <laughs> 2012. Captain. Captain Spalding. So, are you guys? Do you? So, everyone's pretty much. Are you? You're just be yourself, be natural, kind of a person. What does it say to you when you see a woman and she clearly, <clears throat> she has um, head surgery, augmentations, and they're, they're no. Fake. I mean, they're they're truly meant to. to there's reasons to get surgery for many different things for mm -hmm. that, you know, and be it aesthetics, be it, yeah. you know, your uh, health, perhaps. Maybe you've had a yeah, breast correct. reduction or implant. There's healthy reasons. There's people mm -hmm. that do them to be, to draw attention to them and to, you know, but either way I've seen bad and I've seen good. I've seen bad, natural, bad, unnatural. I've seen great, small, great, big, great. There's everything. And if it's done tastefully, if it's done untastefully, it just depends on the context. I mean, uh, I'm not. And the person. Too. And the person, too. I mean, there's all kinds of things. I mean, I don't think I ever need to see like those, like the ridiculous, like the oh, yeah. 90 D, 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 like you're bigger than the actual torso. I don't need yeah. that really in my life. It's interesting to look at it as far as like the watching the guy hang jumping with it or <laughs> dumpster fire, you know, with his ass <laughs> bungee jumping, it. you know. But Into anyway. I don't know. Well, I Leo, it always it always comes back to tits, farts, ass, poop, boobies. I, yeah, so I remember. Just in case wow. you're asking, we got who's asking in the chat. <laughs> yeah. there there it is. Hey, I remember watching Jerry Springer, and there's this chick that was on the show, and her biggest hang up was she had small fucking tits, you know, the itty bitty what a titty committee or whatever. Sure. But you know, I thought she, she was. In my mind, she was fucking hot. It was mm -hmm. like, this chick is hot. I'd love the fucking date this chick at oh. fucking cute as hell. But the next show is that she actually had the implants. And when she came back on the show, I don't know what she had. I was a D or double D. I don't know what. But when I seen her, it's just like, oh, my God, you ruined yourself. You know, even though I do like a, 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 a nice amount of boobs, this chick that hardly had any boobs, it's just like. There's something about her that when she had this cosmetic surgery, like in my mind, it's just like, oh, uh, that's okay. I'll pass. I'll, I'll, what else is out there? <laughs> you, know, but, you, know, the but, you know, but, in, but, but then that sucks because in her mind, she wasn't feeling good about herself with, with what she came into this world with. So she had the surgery. Then all of a sudden she's feeling like on top of the world. And then there's, you know, so who am I to fucking judge, you know? Mm -hmm. So you, like, it, you know that's why it. it comes down to, to each your own. Greeny, do you think you were like maybe turned away from it because you saw the um, procedure like through the no, no, they didn't show, they didn't show the feel. they didn't show the procedure. It just showed um, a beforehand and after. Yeah. And even though you know I am a boob man, I know I like a, a a good amount of it. 
like this chick that hardly had anything she was just just there was something about her everything just flowed perfectly like a, a perfect picasso painting and then when she tried to alter it that it, it just it, it fucking ruined it and it's just like and i didn't even understand it in my mind it's just like no it's big better and i was like well why isn't this working for me so i don't know it just it makes it's stuff that's that makes where you your think. past diverged yeah, that's maybe. You, that's, 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 and that's why I don't know anything at 48 years old. Wow. You just tied that up in a little bow. Yeah, right? There's a bookend for you. There's two Yoda bookends on either side. One with yeah, I mean, we, I'm going to make sure I don't have anything else. We're at that hour marker. Yeah, right. Um, we could end on that. Everything? I did cover everything. Holy shit. Well, Wales? folks, we have an exciting show next week as well. Um, but before that, thank you, Jeffrey. Hey guys, oh, thanks for having me back. For God, hanging. anytime. How about uh, come back? Yeah, when we get when you get some new stuff rolling, Stuart, come we back. can dive into another song. And even if you don't, if you, if you're a lazy ass motherfucker like me, just come oh. back. <laughs> I will. You, you guys are great. I appreciate nice. you guys. Definitely fun to be goofy with y'all. Um, so we've got a couple really really good shows coming up, folks. We got Reeves from the Cure back again. Nice. Um, next Damn! month. Seriously, thank um, you. Thank Damn! him and thank his wife for, for helping him consider to put us back on his schedule. That's awesome. Um, we also have um, next week, is what I wanted to, wanted to get into. We're going to dive into the world of what's called street epistemology. So there can be a little bit of homework um, for you guys. Um, to look up street epistemology, I believe. Let me just find it really quick. The YouTube channel where you can find most of it. Anthony Magnabosco is going to be our guest. He did not invent street epistemology, but we are going to dive down the. We are going to. I thought it would be interesting to take. We're going to dive down the world of how people came to believe something. And that's basically a nutshell of what street epistemology is. So if you have a belief such as, I believe there's ghosts, um, you know. I believe I, I can fly. I believe I can fly. We should, yes. Um, the street epistemology, epistemology in general is trying to dissect, peel back the reasons why someone comes to believe something. So super excited about that. Nice. Um, and uh, Amanda will be on after that. And I'm trying to think we got, oh. Can we do, can can I make a request, yeah. a live request? Sure. Can, can we do Zoom with Amanda? What? Oh, the game? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. No problem. Okay. Like the way you talk, we, we do talk. with the guy all the time. Yeah, yeah. Where you get really, really close. And that, that, wow, you oh, just oh. have that ready to go. Do you have a weirdo keyboard with all that shit on it? Kind of. Um, Zoom, folks, we'll play that with Amanda. I'll, I'll do that. Basically, I zoom really, really close in on something. You have to guess what it is. Oh, okay. And then you zoom out to see what the answer is. Oh, that would have been fun today if we would have done that. So <laughs> I was trying to focus a little, at least. Damn. Just you and your music. That's what I thought we were going to do, too. I was all like, oh, yeah, cool. We're going to do Zoom because, you know. No. Sorry. Um, then, we're talking about your artwork, your wonderful artwork. The last person on the schedule <laughs> is Mike from Ink and Art Tattoo. Um, we're going to dive down. Like you claim. Yeah. We're going to dive down, um, how he came to do tattoos and have some picture examples. And then we can ask some questions, you know, um, maybe about boobs. Who knows? Um, it always comes back. Well, well today. All right. So, yeah, um, that's a about boobs. Week, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Please, uh, tune back in what? next week and, uh, we will see you then. Yo.